Yeah, how are you learners and uh, followers of this channel? This is another day that you're going again with uh, the revision on business data analysis. And today, lesson, we are going to cover the consolidated financial statements. Specifically, we are going to look at a question that requires us to prepare the consolidated statement of financial position involving only a single subsidiary. In this case, yeah, and we shall go through this particular question and it, re it reads uh, on uh, 1st April Ambaza Limited acquired the following investment 1320,000 equity shares in Rhodesia Limited at a cost of 27 million 300,000 when the retained earnings uh, yeah there is a statement there that is missing when the retained earnings uh, okay so that one we shall uh, correct that Okay, so we continue now. I think there was a problem here. So on 1st April, Ambaza Limited acquired the following investment, 1320 equity shares in Rhodesia Limited at a cost of 2700 million or 27 million 300,000 when the retained earnings of Rhodesia Limited were 12 million 500,000. Then we acquired also 50% of Rhodesia Limited, 12% debenture. The statement of financial position of the two companies as that uh, that first March 2020 was follows. So I've been given that statement additional. The fair value of Rhodesia Limited assets at the date of acquisition were equal to the occurring value except for an item of plant which had a fair value of 1.6 in excess of its carrying amount. The plant has a remaining life of 4 years. So here we are having the fair value gain. On 15th March, Rhodesia Limited sold goods to Ambaza for... 700,000 all on credit terms. The goods had not been received by the company as at that first March 2020 and were not included in the closing inventory. So no entry has been made in the books of Ambassador Limited in respect of this transaction. Rudisha Limited sells all the customers at a markup of 16 and 2 that. As at that first March 2020, the account payable of Ambassador Limited included 750,000 due to Rudisha Limited before taking into account the above transaction. Ambaza Limited has not accounted for dividend receivable from Rhodesia Limited. So here you can see we have dividend, we shall account for that. Goodwill, goodwill arising on acquisition of Rhodesia Limited was considered impaired by 20% as at, as at that first March 2020. So the fair value attributable to non-controlling interest was 6 8. So you have Consolidated statement of financial position as at that first March 2020. So I'll copy this. Okay. So I shall have it here. Let me prepare it. So I'll do some workings there. So that I'll prepare it here. Uh, so this is Ambaza Limited. Ambaza limited and uh, so Baza limited consolidated statement consolidated statement consolidated statement of financial position position Uh, that that first match 2020 uh, that that first March 2020 that way I will uh, center these and uh, even this one just center this and bold our title and uh, the other thing and change this in this area of my working go after in new roman and uh, font 12 yeah that one is okay okay so that is our heading now our workings we shall do some workings even on these other 
these are the end I'll do my markings here so that uh, here we shall start with uh, the non current asset and our uh, so and put equals to the non current asset that we have and uh, we shall have the PPE we shall have uh, the investments and we shall have goodwill 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 then we shall continue with that so <coughs> starting with the the PPE we know there was a fair value gain here Rodisha had a fair value gain of 1.6 in excess of its carrying value the plant had a remaining of supply for 4 years so fair value depreciation remember we acquired it on on 1st April and we are reporting on March March 2020 yeah so it was on 1st April let me refer to the initial question 1st April of 2018 yeah 1st April of 2018 1st April, let me adjust this. It was the 1st of April 2018. 2018, that is when we acquired, and by the time we are acquiring it, uh, the plant had a remaining supply for 4 years. And remember, now we are reporting on when? That 1st March 2020. So here, the fair value depreciation, uh, fair value depreciation will be. 1600 uh, the shillings in thousand and I divide by four years let me put equals to activate this cell 1600 over four and I multiply by how many years so 2018 2019 is one year then 20 so 2019 is one year and 2020 will be the second year so I multiply by two years which we shall have a depreciation of 800 in that case so what it means now is that when you are calculating our value of PPE we calculate it here yeah in this cell so this one will be equals to my PPE remember the simple addition we add this one and we add the fair value of uh, one six okay let me just have that fair value yeah fair value gain fair value gain so we had the fair value gain of 1600 so that uh, so in this end now so initial calculated here shillings in thousand shillings in thousand thousand so my PPE therefore now will be this value and I add uh, so that value plus this value and I add the fair value gain and I minus the fair value depreciation so the value of the PPE will be 62 160 when you come to investment our uh, value of investment uh, in uh, Rudisha we had investment of 52 I add investment in uh, this one which was uh, 48 and I minus our internal remember here we had invested what uh, at a cost 27300 that's what we had paid to acquire um, Rudisha and uh, we also acquired 50% of Rudisha, 12% debenture. So when you look at the debenture of uh, Rudisha, it was um, 17 odd. No, debenture was 28. So 50% of these uh, will be 1400. It will be part of our investment. So still we minus the 1400 that we acquired. Remember, we only account for external investment. We don't account for internal investment. So we minus that you'll get our total as 28700 as part of our investments you look at our goodwill calculation of goodwill 
calculation of goodwill so when you start with the purchase consideration the purchase consideration consideration purchase consideration so here uh, yeah let me put it here or even you can just put it here so we paid uh, this value 27300 to acquire it and we had fair value in ci fair value nci <coughs> nci had a fair value of somewhere here yeah because that, that first match mm -hmm, goodwill arising so the fair value attributable to an uncontrolling interest of six eight yeah six eight so that uh, alt equals the two of them is that value use the top border then fair value of net assets acquired fair value of net assets so our net assets uh, we had ordinary ordinary shares just have this and uh, our ordinary shares uh, that we acquired uh, they were valued at 16500 so i'll put a minus this value and then uh, we acquired uh, retained but retained remember is the pre we normally deal with the pre-acquisition and i will put our pre-acquisition we are told here when the retained earnings was 12.5 yeah 12.500 and we have the fair value the fair value gain the fair value gain here which will be equals to minus this value 1600 and our fair value gain that we had i think those are the only item that we had at the time of acquisition so our goodwill that we shall get here alt equals you need to add from here and i enter so you shall have a goodwill of uh, 35 goodwill impaired goodwill impaired impaired it was impaired by 20 20 percent yeah goodwill arising was impaired by 20 percent so it will be equals to this value by 20 percent 0 0.2 you'll get 700 so goodwill and impaired goodwill and impaired which will be our asset uh, so this one shall put a minus minus so that here you shall put articles and uh, we combine these two yeah it will be 2028 20, the unimpaired goodwill and impaired goodwill of 28 me format this uh, to include the negative okay uh, I'll use this and use bracket and here so that it will not put red and right black there and i put okay yeah that one is okay then uh, so goodwill already we have gotten our value of goodwill the unimpaired one uh, and uh we get alt equals the total for that and i enter just put the top border here and i will bold that value that way so the next category here we go to current our current assets and our current asset we shall have inventory and uh, we shall have receivable and uh, we shall have bank that way so for the receivable or for the inventory we had the UPCS and realize profit UPCS that we shall calculate there there were some sales here on 15th March 2020. Prudisha Limited sold goods to Ambaza for 700, all on credit terms. The goods had not been received by the company as of that first March 2020 and were not included in the closing inventory. No entry has been made in the books of Ambaza Limited 
in respect of this transaction rodisha sells goods to all customers uh, at a markup of 16 and to that it was an upstream because it is rodisha the subsidiary that was selling uh, to the parent company so we shall take uh, 700 uh, here and we multiply by 16 and uh, two third and it is in percentage 16 and two third Mm. Okay, which I'll put 16. Let's see whether it will give me the accurate answer. Six, 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 seven mm, percent. And uh, yeah, let me just so is it a markup? Yeah, it was a standard markup. Okay, let me repeat that. So it will be 700 multiplied by 16.667. 667 over 116.667. Yeah, something like that. Uh -huh. I activate that cell. Yeah, which will give me 100. 16 and 2 that yeah, it should be 100 as our UPCS in that particular case so we shall take then under the inventory we put it here so my value will be this uh, we have 60 this for Ambaza and I add the one for Rudisha and I added the 700. Remember, they are saying it was not yet received, huh? and I will minus now my UPCS. That way, my receivable is just but simple. We add this, and uh, we shall deal with this other note here. As of that first March note 3, the accounts payable of Ambassador included 750 due to judicial limited before taking into account the above transaction. So here we shall minus uh, the 750. Uh, we shall minus both now the 750 7 minus the 750 750 so we minus uh, the 750 and we minus the 700 yeah even the 700 because already that one again was not accounted for we received it in the inventory and we minus it in the accounts receivable the 700 then the bank such simple addition what we had here so only for one that way we get the total assets here and our total assets so we shall add this articles uh, this sum I enter that articles these two and enter we bold this I put the top and bottom border yeah that way so that is our the first part of this then we go to the second the equity and liabilities equity and liabilities we shall start with the ordinary equity and liabilities we we'll bold this and the current will bold this so under equity and liability we shall have the ordinary and we shall have the retained earnings ordinary just put the holding we don't consolidate that so for the retained i'll do it here my retained my retained earnings retained earnings as a working so we have retained earnings for ambaza ambaza Baza had uh, retained earnings of uh, this one 34.50 and Rudisha we take the post for Rudisha Rudisha we take the post so here you shall take you will open the bracket the this value and I minus the pre the return that we had at the beginning because that is minus I will add I add this Retain earnings at the beginning, I close and I multiply by 80%. Multiply by 80%. Uh, 
we acquired 80 percent of that so it was a negative in this case the post was a negative because it was less than the pre acquisition and then we have the dividend receivable this value and some dividend that we shall receive because we are told we have not yet accounted for the dividend so this one by 80 by 80 percent then we less the fair value depreciation here our share of the fair value depreciation we multiply by 80 by 80 by 0 by 0.8 80 percent and uh, this one we are supposed to minus we minus that value that way we have a UPCS UPCS again for the UPCS we take our value we take our value because it was an upstream transaction by 0.8 and again this one we minus it's supposed to minus that do you have any other thing yeah the uh, goodwill impaired our portion again of the goodwill that was impaired goodwill that was impaired our portion 80 percent that way i think that's all we have accounted for everything that was there yeah all of it so we get articles and i enter uh, that will be my retained earnings here is value so i get the shareholders that will be able to parent Tributable to holding company, holding company, tributable to holding company. Just add this to alt equals put the top border. Then we have the NCI, calculate the NCI, NCI share of net assets. NCI share of net assets so for the NCI I will uh, do that working here the NCI share of net assets and we shall start with the fair value NCI the fair value NCI here which was valued at 6 8 fair value NCI and the retained the post our retained earnings we take the post here and you'll say the post is this um, yeah this value just a minute this is equals to I open the bracket these we minus the pre our pre was this so I said because that is negative I will add this value and now multiply by 20 percent 20 percent remember we had acquired uh, okay just a minute we have assumed it was 80 let me just confirm we acquired 1320 equity shares of uh, rudisha when you look at rudisha 10 each so this is 1650 so our ownership there will be okay let me just calculate it here the ownership will be 1320 over 1650 over 1650 these are when you divide by 10 and uh, yeah we have been okay it is 80 percent the ownership 80 percent and uh, the NCI is 20 20 percent so it's okay that and uh, we have the depreciation yeah so before the position you can deal with dividends then see they received their dividend here dividend of this they multiply by 20 20 percent then the fair value depreciation they also have a share of the depreciation fair value depreciation 
which will be the fair value depreciation up here we had 800 we multiply by 20 percent and for the depreciation we said we minus that value the value depreciation you have your pcs your pcs okay just let me insert some few some few of them okay so here we have upcs as the next item on the line our upcs upcs was 100 we had upcs here 100 we multiply by 20 <coughs> and again that one is a minus that way and then after upcs here the goodwill impaired the goodwill impaired so the goodwill impaired uh, we pick it because already is negative 20 percent 140 and then put alt equals that value 558 use the top and bottom border the thick one yeah that way and bold that value so our uh, nci therefore will be this value that way alt equals yeah these two values here and i enter so that one becomes uh, number what our shareholders value shareholders value shareholders shareholders wealth or value shareholders wealth or the total value of the shareholders then uh, let me just put the top border for that the next category we go to what you call uncurrent or uncurrent liability and current liability um, on uncurrent liability we have two items we have the 12 percent debenture and we have uh, the deferred tax so for the debentures uh, we take our value here we had this and we add uh, these but by 50 percent by 50 percent it will be nine six maybe we acquired only half and this other one we shall take this and we add the other one just simple addition and we add the two here the two of them there we have that value then the next one we shall have is a current current liability current liability is here we'll bold that so current liability comprises of uh, payable comprises of uh, taxation and tax comprises of dividends dividends and comprises of uh, comprises of bank overdraft that way so you start with the uh, payable simple addition this we add this and we minus the seven what was it 750 this 750 remember this one already it cancelled we minus the 750 the intercompany the intercompany sells intercompany balances the company balances so taxation we had this we had this and then uh, dividends are only the holding company only the holding uh, because already the others 1200 we have accounted for it under the retained earnings and under the nci share under the nci share of net asset so that one has been taken care of bang overdraft bang overdraft is only one here we enter that we get the total here and the total the total healthy cost sum of this three i enter and here again alt equals the sum of the three of them now here i enter and that's our total i bold this and i put the thick top and bottom border this is our total total capital liability total 
capital and liabilities total capital and liabilities and you can counter check that we have 112060 and even here we had 112060 and that's how that question of group was supposed to be to be tackled in this particular case the ambassador limited uh, consolidated statement of financial position so we have dealt with our workings yeah fair value depreciation i've said we are depreciating it for two years we have dealt with goodwill here calculation of goodwill using the full goodwill method we have calculated our upcs there our upcs the retained earnings and we have calculated the nci share of net assets and we have been able to tackle that question and we've been able to balance that question so continue subscribing to this channel for more content like this and comment with any question that you have so that we can assist you when you are doing your preparation for the business data analysis august exam and any other exam concerning data analysis thank you